Hey guys, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to create the stacked pillar effect in Blender. It's not really that useful, but I think it's cool, so I'm going to show you anyway. Let's get started. So I'm going to jump into my demo scene here and just quickly rename the material to abstract 02. Now the first thing we're going to do is add in a mix RGB here. And I'm going to connect the color to the base color of our principal BSDF. And I'm going to plug this directly into a color amp, like so. Now, if we move this back to make some space for all our math nodes, that'll be around about here. But first, let's just add in a Voronoi texture, which will be driving the effect. Now, we'll be using the same Voronoi texture for uh, every layer of math. And we can just change the scale to something like 10. Actually, well, let's, let's just set these colors so we can see what we're doing. So I'll make this color a red. In this one, a dark red. There we go. Uh, random, maybe 0.8. So now in our color amp, we can just sort of clamp these values together a bit. And as you can see, that's brought in a bit more definition. Actually, I'm gonna leave that white value all the way over. There we go. And just move this black slider here. That looks pretty good for color variation. Now let's move on to our displacement. Really, this whole effect relies on displacement. Make sure you have a subdivision surface modifier. So I'm gonna add in another node. Let's make it a math node. This will be our first math node here in a series. And I'm gonna set this to greater than. Let's connect our math node up. And we're gonna start off with uh, sort of the, the tip of the uh, layer effect here. So if you can kind of think of it, I'll pop an image so we can uh, look. It's kind of this sort of part of our material. And to get that, we're actually going to need a very small threshold. So I'm going to set this to 0.05. That'll just decrease the size of these dots. And I'm going to add in another math node and set this to add, like so. And what this will be doing is just combining our, our two values here when I add in a, another math node. So each layer of the effect will be a different greater than math node. So if I just duplicate it, bring it down, and take the same color ramp input, but let's make it use a color ramp for our threshold value here. Now, if we have a look at this greater than, think of this as the second layer going down, so it'll be slightly bigger than this top circle. So if we just clamp this down so it's not too small, best to look at the add node and pass this one through we can see our sort of layered effect starting to happen, which each layer being a different shade of gray. Hopefully they should be getting lighter, which is what we want. And well, we can just repeat this pattern. So I'm gonna add in another add math node and another greater than math node, and just pass this color ramp down as well. Pop that into the bottom value and put the four and eye texture through to the top value and then pass this through to our add node. So as we change this, we can see we'll get another layer happening. And you might also have to just tweak this one a bit if it overlaps too much. Now let's repeat that again. So I'm gonna duplicate these, move them down, pass in that Voronoi texture, add in another add node and pop that through. Now let's tweak the values. Let's do it two more times. Okay, now we can see we have our effect starting to appear with lots of the different layers here. So that's cool, but let's turn this into a displacement map. So I'm gonna just view my principal BSDF shader here, and I'll be adding in a displacement node. And so this way, what we can do is take this and use it as our height input for the displacement node, then patch that through to our displacement and then we can realize that we need to turn on displacement in our texture settings. So let's come down here under settings in surface. Let's change this to displacement and bump. Obviously the first thing we notice is that it's gone a little bit crazy, but that's okay. All we have to do is change the scale to something like, I don't know, 0 0.01. And then we could see our effect starting to appear. Now, one little thing here that we need to change is our effect is actually inverted. Now you could go through and change all these color ramps, but I'm just gonna add an A invert note here. And that'll bring everything out the way it should be. 
Now, we don't exactly have enough topology for this effect to really shine. So I just turned off adaptive subdivision and just bumped up my subdiv levels here. Now, before I go, a useful thing about making these node trees is that we can turn them into groups. If I just select everything here and press Control G, we now have a really manageable node group that we can rename to abstract 02. In here, in this node group, we get this nice group input, which we can patch through to our vector and to our scale. And if you want, you can do it to your randomness. I don't know how much that'll change things. Oh, I mean, it makes another cool looking effect, so why not? Now, one more thing here. If we want to control this color amp slider, for instance, outside our node group, we need to use drivers to do that. So what does that mean? Well, if we add in another value here, like that, let's make it randomness because this will give us a nice little slider. And I'm going to rename this value to color amp. Now, if we go outside our node group and right click on this value, we can copy the data path. Now, back in our node group, if we click on this slider here and right click on the position, we can add a driver. Now, in this driver, if we change it to a sum of values and change the uh, target type to a single property, now what we can do is select the property, which is going to be a material, then select the material and paste in our data path. If we press update dependencies, and as you can see, it's updated that slider there. If we go outside of our group, we can now see that that value will control our color slider. And that's super handy thing to know because there'll be lots of situations where you need to just change those sliders outside of a node group. Now I have found that you can't actually change these colors. Uh, it just doesn't let you, which is really annoying. Um, I have worked out a way around that though, using some math nodes. I might show that in a different video. Anyway, after we've done that, let's just copy that group input here. And I'm gonna move it over to my color. Now let's add two more inputs for color one and color two. Nice. And now we can select our colors in our node group, which is, which is gonna make customizing this material even easier. Anyway, I think that's probably it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you learned something. All the project files will be available for free up to download on my Gumroad. I'll leave a link for that in the description below. Be sure to subscribe for more upcoming content and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.